Item Number SCP-538 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures All instances of SCP-538 are to be contained within a flush white 15x15x3m room, with no fewer than four overhead 200-watt lights. These lights are to be centered above a 1x2x0.5m block table stationed in the center of the containment area and shining at all times. One Class D personnel in a chemically induced coma is to be kept medically stable upon the table and will serve as the feed source for all specimens of SCP-538. No source of shade should be present in the room other than that provided by the Class D. If at any point a light in SCP-538's containment area burns out, a crew of two security personnel are to be sent in through an adjacent airlock. Personnel are to be equipped with sealed hazardous material suits, complete with independent oxygen tanks, and advised to move slowly and deliberately in order to avoid agitating SCP-538. They are to replace the burnt-out bulb and, upon completion of their task, are to return to the airlock. Once personnel are isolated within an airlock, they are to be flushed with 300-watt white light in order to assure no instances of SCP-538 are clinging to their person. Examination of the Class D personnel providing sustenance for SCP-538 are to be done in a similar manner. However, only one doctor is required for examinations. See Addendum 538A. If at any time all four lights are to go out simultaneously, the chamber is to be sealed, along with all observation ports. Until means of relighting SCP-538's chamber are available, the containment area is to remain in lockdown. If at any time personnel are bitten by SCP-538, the infected individual must be placed within SCP-538's chamber as soon as possible. Failure to do so could result in massive breach of containment and will result in termination of responsible individual. Note, security personnel are to be periodically screened for any unusual phobias. Any personnel found to exhibit any degree of arachnophobia is to be reassigned. Description. SCP-538 appears to be animate shadows of an unknown species of spiders. SCP-538 appears to feed off of the shadows of other living objects, and will move to the nearest shadow cast by a living organism. To feed, SCP-538 does no more than attach itself to the shadow of its host, in such a manner that its own shadow is not obscured. Through this manner, a single specimen of SCP-538 can grow up to approximately 15 square centimeters in size. Feeding after this point appears to simply maintain the size. The whole process has so far proven to be harmless to the host. While a specimen can attach itself to an inanimate object to feed, it will slowly atrophy and decrease in size over time. Only when connected to the shadow of a living organism can SCP-538 thrive. SCP-538 has shown itself capable of going short distances through open, well-lit areas, such as to reach a nearby host or to escape a source of agitation. However, it will rapidly decrease in size at a rate of nearly two square centimeters per second for the length of time it is not attached to a shadow. Should a specimen be stranded out in the open long enough, it will eventually decrease to nothing, at which point it can be considered deceased. Top land speed have been observed at approximately 1 meter per second when at maximum size. SCP-538 has shown itself to be capable of slipping through cracks greater than 3 mm in height. Spaces less than this distance appear impassable. While generally benign, SCP-538 can and will attack its host if frightened. Frightening SCP-538 generally involves a rapid movement by its host, at which point it will bite the organism's shadow before attempting to flee. Bite must occur on bare skin to cause effects. Clothing material consisting of cotton or anything sturdier will provide sufficient protection. Upon being bitten, an individual will go through five different stages within the space of an hour. Note that bitten individuals may attempt to hide their condition, therefore any individual exhibiting the following symptoms must be contained immediately. Stage 1 Upon agitation, SCP-538 will bite the shadow of its aggressor. Subject will report pain in relative area bitten on shadow. However, no puncture or wound will appear in this location. Subject will quickly become irritable, 
snapping at those around him. Stage 2 10 to 15 minutes after being bitten, subject will begin perspiring heavily, but may report feeling cold. Skin will become red and warm to the touch. Stage 3 25 to 30 minutes after being bitten, subject will become violent and aggressive, attempting to start conflict with those around him. Speech will be slurred, and motor skills may be impaired. Subject will resort to violence, often attacking those closest to him. Stage 4 40 to 45 minutes after being bitten, subject's skin color will turn pale and paste colored, and their core temperature will drop between 5 and 8 degrees Celsius. Subject will be apologetic to those around him, and may cite that he was not feeling well. Subject will attempt to excuse himself and retreat to a darker area. Stage 5 55 to 60 minutes after being bitten, subject will Resulting fluid will be completely translucent and harmless. Subject's shadow will have at this point completely disintegrated into smaller specimens of SCP-538, approximately 4 square centimeters in area, and, for the lack of a better term, should be considered its offspring. There is currently no cure for being bitten by SCP-538. Death has proven to be ineffective at halting advancement of the condition, but rather skips the process directly to Stage 5. Addendum 538-A as a result of Incident I-538-A, no fewer than two security personnel equipped with two 250-watt flashlights are to be sent in to accompany Doctor Examining Class D. Incident Report I-538-A Site Sector Containment Chamber 538 Doctor enters Containment Chamber 538 for a routine checkup of D-7821 equipped with standard-issue fully sealed hazardous material suit. Two minutes and twenty-three seconds into examination, attack by the Chaos Insurgency cuts power to sectors through, as per protocol, chamber completely sealed and locked, trapping Dr. inside with SCP-538. Power remains off for an additional twenty-three minutes until backup generators are powered up and patched into the power grid. As per protocol, Power was not routed to SCP-538's containment cell, but rather the sector containing at the time. Power subsequently routed through to the next highest level priority containment cells. As SCP-538 was sufficiently contained at the time, it was deemed minimal priority. No major containment breaches were reported. Attack repelled quickly and with minimum casualties. Site engineers worked to restore power. Eighteen hours after Chaos Insurgency attack, power finally reaches SCP-538 containment cell. A sobbing doctor is escorted from the chamber, claiming he could, quote, feel them crawling, unquote, all over him. Doctor undergoes psychological therapy for his newfound arachnophobia. Containment protocol updated. Doctor was reassigned.